What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den located in Colmar slash Hatfield area in Pennsylvania. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about hypertrophy training, more specifically on five key points that I have learned from Dr. Mike Isertel, who is the co-owner of RP Strength, Renaissance Periodization, and he also has been a training partner of mine uh, the last several months uh, prior to him moving out to Vegas. Prior to meeting Mike, I actually had done RP templates uh, when they first started coming out. So his name was somebody that I'd known in the industry for a long time. And as he kept putting out content, I knew he was the guy I wanted to go to when it comes to hypertrophy training because of the application of training as well as science combined. I'm a big fan of that. And uh, he was just a person that I wanted to connect with. So we started shooting some videos together, which you probably have saw, but I'll link them up here uh, where we did some leg training and then uh, some other sorts of training, which we'll just keep tagging throughout the video. Uh, but we became training partners actually for the last several months. So. Uh, him, myself, and our other training partner, Charlie, uh, would hit it a couple days a week, and they were just teaching me tons of stuff about hypertrophy training, AKA growing the size of the muscle, AKA bodybuilding style training. Uh, and the, the thought process behind all this, which we have talked about in other videos, was basically to switch up my training completely. Uh, with COVID going on, it was very tough uh, to know exactly when I was gonna compete again next. And during that time, I just wanted to do some hypertrophy training so that I could put some size on. And then as I get back in more specific to strongman, I should hopefully uh, be able to be the strongest I've ever been once we get back into it. So with this video, I wanted to give you guys some of those key tips that I've learned with him as a training partner and a mentor. Uh, but you guys should obviously be checking out his content on YouTube uh, and their website. They're putting out tons and tons of content every week, lots of great stuff. And I couldn't be more of an advocate for them uh, just because I know them as people and their intelligence is top notch and they look like beasts. So they have a nice uh, resume to follow when it comes to their hypertrophy content and just who they are as a brand. So my first tip when it comes to hypertrophy training is that hypertrophy training should be treated just as such that we do with strength training. And what I mean by that is that there needs to be proper planning when it comes to your training cycles or mesocycles, and you need to have some way to track everything. So we need to have some sort of auto-regulation, whether that's uh, reps and reserve or RPE based. Uh, there should obviously be planned deloads when the time is appropriate for that and just a, a way to measure the intensity uh, and stimulus. So some sort of progressive overload. Uh, I know when I was younger and I was doing hypertrophy, I would just walk in the gym and maybe I hit a chest workout and I would just do tons of volume, but I wasn't really tracking anything. Or I would just do something like do 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, and just try to you know gradually work up heavier all the time, uh, which worked for a little bit, but as you get more into it, you need to treat it just as you would for strength programming in the sense that we have to plan out these cycles. We have to make sure that we're putting the right stress in our body and we need to ease up uh, at appropriate time so that we can have the best uh, adaptation for the muscle to grow. So that's a mistake I think a lot of people make is they don't treat it just as such and they just come in and hit tons of reps all the time without writing everything down in your notebook and planning it out just as you would uh, if you were trying to increase your squat, bench, and deadlift and doing some sort of strength sport. The second thing that I had learned uh, from Dr. Mike and RP Strength was to make sure that we increase the frequency. And if you've been on my channel, you know that that is uh, not a new concept because I love higher frequencies when it comes to a lot of the main movements. Uh, but the same thing applies for bodybuilding. So typically what the research is showing is that you wanna be training each body part anywhere from two to six times per week. Now I'd say if you're probably newer, uh, you wanna stay on the lower end of that spectrum, so start with like two times a week, uh, but you will find that other body parts can respond better to higher frequency training. And there has been that typical bro spit uh, mentality where it was like, you know, train your chest one day a week, then you do your arms one day a week, et cetera. Uh, but what we found to get the best results possible and what I have learned through talking to Mike and those guys is higher frequency is just gonna be better overall. So. When it comes to smaller muscle groups, I tend to hit them more frequently. So for example, I hit my shoulders about four times per week. Uh, but other muscle groups, the, the minimal uh, amount that I'll train them per week is gonna be two times per week. So if you guys are still stuck doing that typical bro split or you're only training the frequency one time per week, increase that frequency. Even if you're doing it two times a week, up it to three and see if that changes the results that you're getting with your physique. Now, number three, when it comes to hypertrophy training is something that Dr. Mike was on my case about in the early stages of training 
was full range of motion. And I'm totally gonna admit that I have made videos in the past where I was doing partial range of motion, but when I learned about it and I want to apply it to hypertrophy, full range of motion is absolutely the way to go. We want to really make sure that we're using the muscle in its entirety, and there really doesn't make any sense why you wouldn't do that, especially for the development of the muscle uh, and just making it look as best as possible long term. So whenever we were training, he was constantly telling me to go full range of motion on every single exercise. So if you watch the videos, we're getting asked to grasp squats. When we're doing our curls, we're coming all the way down and then we're squeezing the muscle all the way up to the top, just every single exercise. And he would just talk about it all the time and uh, just a huge advocate of it. And it definitely does make a difference. So stop doing those partial ranges of motion and really try to get full range of motion every single exercise when it comes to hypertrophy. The other thing that Mike had talked about a lot during our training was controlling the eccentric. So when we were doing bench press and not letting the bar come down and slam on our chest, or when we're doing leg curls, making sure as uh, we lower the weight down on the machine that we're controlling it on the way down, okay? The eccentric is where you can get a lot of muscle growth. Uh, and not to say it needs to be a tempo, but there's a time place for tempos, but just being generally under control on the eccentric portion of movements. Now the last little concept when it came to kind of this umbrella of points is going to be to minimize or have no body English. And I will say, once again, when I would do my rows, I would use tons of body English to put up as much weight as possible. Uh, but when it comes to hypertrophy training and building the actual muscle size and that my muscle connection, uh, just doing them strict is the most beneficial. And the reason is because it's hard to gauge, uh, you know, the next week, if you used body English, how much did that actually affect your, your ability to control the movement with your muscle? So uh, when you keep it strict, it's really easy to understand how many reps you hit at what weight once you start adding that body English, it gets kind of blurry. Much like when you see guys assisting people on the lat pull down, where they're kind of pulling it down for them, well, it's really hard to gauge how much did they help you on that lat pull down versus how much was it you. So just to eliminate that whole entire process or uh, issue to, to deal with, we just don't do any body English on the movements. And I do think it's definitely more beneficial to do it that way. And um, that's something that I really had to change going into this whole hypertrophy training phase that I've been doing, uh, but I really enjoy it. Number four, this is gonna be the tough pill to swallow for everybody, is that we are all different. So what works for me may not work for you, and what works for you may not work for me. And that's kind of what makes this whole thing a journey and a process. Everybody thinks that, oh, if Joe does rows, I need to do rows. And it's like, yes, to some extent, but at the same time, maybe for your back, uh, this row variation is not gonna be as great as another one. So you need to experiment and play around with that. And one thing that I learned uh, during my hypertrophy training was that some exercises uh, were not targeting the muscles or, or that I was trying to target appropriately, or there were others that did a way better job of it. So through trial and error, I found out that some exercises I'm just not gonna use, and other exercises are my favorite, and I'll continue to use them until they no longer work. And I'm sure you guys kind of have intuitively stumbled upon this where you think, oh man, this exercise pops right into your brain right now. Like, that's a great exercise for my chest. I really feel the pump and the squeeze and I can have a good mind-muscle connection. And then other ones maybe don't. The same thing applies for equipment. Some bars may be better than other bars. Or maybe you want to use a barbell or a dumbbell or dumbbell over a barbell or maybe bands, etc. So just put that into consideration. Understand that you're your own uh, person and that you need to focus on what works for you. It's great to have a base and a template to start off of, but don't get stuck doing that same thing over and over again if it's not working, okay? Figure out how to adjust uh, and then get the best possible product uh, from the base and make it more custom and specific to your training goals and needs. All right, last one, tip number five before we wrap this baby up is gonna be that training should be fun and you should enjoy it. And I've gotten stuck in that mindset of I have to be hashtag beast mode, hashtag savage, hashtag flex, hashtag swole, hashtag no pain, no gain, hashtag go hard or go home. But that can also lead you into a bad place mentally where you actually don't like what you're doing. And if you're in this for the long haul, it should absolutely be something that you enjoy. Yes, there will be tough days. Yes, every day is not going to be easy, but in a whole, you should have way more good days than bad, and the gym should be something that you look forward to and as well as your training. So one of the things that I really noticed with these training partners, because they are newer training partners, I've had a ton of training partners over my career uh, so far of training. And I've had some guys who are really intense. You know, they don't talk. They're very, like, we come in, we hit it hard, we do our thing, and we get out. And these guys, I would say it's different, is for being hardworking, 
great athletes and bodybuilders, right? Uh, we had a lot of fun. You know, we would focus when we need to focus and we hit a hard set, but right after we often found ourselves laughing and kind of just cracking jokes, uh, which made it more enjoyable to train. It made us look forward to training with each other because we had those moments. So really figure out, you know, why you're doing this. Maybe it's, you need to figure out different training partners who make you enjoy it more, or if you are having a good time, know that you're doing the right thing. So it was kind of something that I just took away on a more personal note is that Training can be fun, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, yes, you have to work hard, but at the same time, know that, you know, you know, like, that's just that cliche quote of like, we're not gonna get out of here alive. So, like, have fun, get after it. It's not the end of the world if you have a bad day, but make the best of the situation. And having good training partners can definitely be something that can totally change that uh, element of training for you.